love to introduce our panel. Um, so we have, uh, as I was saying, I'd like to get started with uh, Andrea. Uh, so please, Andrea, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, who you sell to, and what your favorite hype song is for your uh, to get ready for a sales call. Yeah, awesome. So um, I'm Andrea Bowers. Uh, I am an account executive for AirDeck. I live in Colorado Springs and I work in my office here, just like most of us already do. But um, so the typical teams that we sell to is um, CS teams and CS leaders, as well as sales teams. So a um, lot of video usage there. My uh, my hype song is um, uh, Crazy Train. Um, by Ozzy Osbourne. I love it. I have actually sang it on karaoke with my former CEO and I can't get enough Ozzy. <laughs> so, definitely a hype song. <laughs> Amazing. That, that's got to rile you up, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, Jimmy. Um, so how about yourself? Yeah, perfect. My name is Jimmy Gagnon. I'm the director of sales at Vidyard. So as far as video usage goes, lots of video usage. Um, as far as who we sell to, so we sell to a lot of different industries. And, um, you know, over the course of the pandemic, we've also, you know, seen a lot of different industries pop up other than what, you know, we, we normally would expect in the, in the tech uh, segments. Um, and then as far as, yeah, in, individuals go, uh, a lot of uh, sales leaders, sales enablement, uh, we work with support teams, so we kind of work across the board. Um, I'll go with two different hype songs. One is like more personal hype songs. So uh, if I really want to get myself fired up or, or really you know feel the vibe, uh, I'll listen to a song called Barroom Hero by the Dropkick Murphys. So I don't know if anyone out there knows it, uh, but it's a great tune. Uh, but more recently, I also coach... Um, Kids hockey, so uh, my son's hockey team, we've got a nice win song. So if we end up winning the game, we'll, we'll uh, turn on I Want to Dance with Somebody by Tina Turner. Yeah. So I say that's a hype song because it, it feels so good after you win to, to turn that on. So I've okay. really been digging that lately. That's fantastic. Want to dance with somebody. Yes, you just you want to get up off your seat right away. <laughs> I'm now singing that in my head right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I also will say you, did, you didn't strike me as an Aussie fan. That would have been the, the last thing. So you, you learn something new every time. You yeah, well, okay. So totally off the record, but um, Aussie actually came out here like almost three years ago, uh, or it was three years ago. And um, I was 20 weeks pregnant with my twins and I went to the Aussie concert and it was like the coolest thing I've ever, I mean, he still sounded the same, but his movements and stuff were a little lackluster, but uh, it was super fun. Definitely a big Aussie fan. Awesome. Diehard fan goes pregnant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazing. Um, how about you, Dale? Uh, I know a lot of people here already know who you are, but uh, let's, how about your intro and your hype song? <laughs> All right. Yeah. My name's Dale Dupree. I spent, 13 plus years selling copy machines. I've been using video since 2009 when I made my first copier warrior commercial that I hosted on the ever loving YouTube. I should have put it in circulation to local TV, but I never did. Maybe I'll do that now that I'm not doing it anymore. Um, but I used to send video obviously as the copier warrior to just about everybody and their mom, from CEOs to administrators to just somebody that needed to smile. Uh, as the leader of the Sales Rebellion now for the last three years, uh, three years today is when we founded our company. Um, Happy anniversary, Dale. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. We're celebrating. So yeah. we're here. I thought, right? It's the whole yeah. purpose of this, this right? Is, I think this so. Is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've been selling to sellers. So I've been sending salespeople video. And my favorite um, response, which Jimmy probably hears all the time, is really cool idea sending a video. That's what most sellers say. It's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, hype song. Like, this one's easy, right? Like, I actually played in a band, toured on Warner Brothers Records. Um, I met Ozzy Osbourne when I played Osfest, Andrea. So, what's up, girl? I see you. Uh, Let's go. Uh, but, but we used to come out on stage to a 3-6 Mafia song. I can't say what it is because it's got terrible language, and I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, but we would literally come out on stage with a 3-6 Mafia song back in 2004. So it was old school through six five. Yeah, but my favorite hype hype song is called Village by a group called Takeover and it's a remix. Everybody should check it out. It's freaking fantastic. Cool, cool. Well, thank you so much, folks. And uh, we're already hyped singing your songs in our heads right yeah. now. I see some uh, other people po 
posting some stuff from Coldplay, the game song from Triple H. This is amazing. Um, so clearly we're all getting hyped because we're thinking about this and this is a perfect segue into the topic of conversation today uh, because we will be talking about sales video um, and, and how we use video in sales. And, and I want to start, um, again, just getting a, a pulse check on the audience of understanding, do you use video in your sales process right now? Because you heard Dale say that uh, a lot of people think it's a great idea, but is it great execution? Are you using it? So uh, I just want to see a quick yes or no. Hey, we're kind of split. I like that not yet. There's, a, there's definitely a plan to use video. Um, so we have kind of a 50-50 here with a little bit more uh, people that seem to be planning to use it, um, which is amazing because you're here with some experts here who crush video um, and know everything there is to know about video. So uh, I'm really excited to get the conversation started. Um, so if, if we can kick things off today, um, I'd just like to ask the panel, um, how do you best capture the attention of prospects throughout the funnel? Who, who wants to, to kick that one off? I think I mean, you just volunteered. <laughs> I, can, I can put my two cents in here. I, I mean, personalization, I think, is really, for me, the best way to capture attention. I mean, besides, you know, having a, a dog in the background or, you know, whatever, being human, but still being able to personalize without having to do too much personalization just shows your warmth. Um, and it gets the attention throughout the entire funnel. So that is uh, my little takeaway there. Awesome, Andrea. Yeah, personalization is really important. I'm curious, um, how do you find details on people to get that personalization? Yeah, so still doing your research, right? Like LinkedIn gives you some information, some information about um, the company, their personal information. It depends on how far you want to go. But um, I've even used video to the extent of screen recording um, their LinkedIn profile and specifically pointing out what I am seeing um, to generate a conversation and to be able to generate enough value. Maybe it was something that they posted that they wanted some help on and, hey, I noticed that you needed this. I have something that can you know provide you some value. Would you like a conversation? And it's not necessarily pitching. Um, it, they could just need a marketing manager added to their team and you could just simply personalize it, uh, personalize it by sending a screen recording. Awesome. I like that. It's not just the personalization to get their attention. It's also personalized with the intent of how you're helping them out. Yeah. 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 You want to give them value. Right. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Um, how about you, Dale? Uh, what, what do you, uh, how do you best capture attention across the funnel? Yeah, I believe in the principle of curiosity first and foremost. And like, not just being a curious person, but also like positive and stilling undeniable curiosity into people. And so I believe that uh, like really at the forefront that the most important thing is to give the right kind of experience. People love a good experience and they're super connected to and become very curious about what's ha what's behind the message of a good experience as well too, or what's part of the message just as well. So I think in my early days, you know, what I created was not this like look into, you know, me and my story as much as I created scenarios that were very familiar for people through my video content. So if I could, if I could show you that I know how frustrated you are with your office equipment, with your, your workflow processes, their software, yada, 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 blah, 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 who cares? If I could get your emotions going and create context around that emotion and curiosity around what it is that I can potentially do to help you get to a better place. And where that emotion is typically taking you, which is like that you hate everything in your office and that there's a guy that fights those battles for you out here. Like that to me was always the most successful piece. I, I really think Andrea's answer is very important as well too. I think it's important to understand the person that you're speaking to. And so to that point of hers as well, like one of the things that I've always, especially for those of you that aren't doing video, there's a lot of people that like loosely say yes or that aren't. Don't sit in front of your webcam to start your videos. Get your cell phone out and save selfie videos and like walk somewhere and like get out of your comfort zone and stop putting yourself into this like little box and like suffocating who you are. Because the thing about personalization is, is that it doesn't work unless it's personalized. That means that you have to believe in the things that you're saying to somebody and that it can't just be like, ooh, if I start this paragraph with like something that's personal followed by what my business does, they'll get back to me. 
Like, honestly, guys, it's 2022, and that's played out over the last three years to the point that, like, I have to take the lead on those emails. No offense, because it's really difficult for me to keep up with the 77 that come in my inbox every day and that are clearly trying to sell me something and not really build a relationship with them. Use the video concept uniquely, not to set an appointment on that first outreach, but to build something with somebody that can get you that appointment, that can get you that sale, that can build a great interpersonal relationship from an ecosystem standpoint with the person that you're speaking with to where they refer you to the next 30 people and you don't have to do cold calls anymore. So <laughs> mic drop. No, <laughs> love that. Um, so it's about really creating that emotional attachment and creating curiosity. Um, I actually have somebody on my LinkedIn who she used to do videos every single day and just did a morning walk with her selfie stick. And she started starting her day with just a, a kind of 360 around. And for some reason, that 360 view with her selfie stick always caught my attention of like 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 you're saying Dale there's so many people in your LinkedIn feed with with all these different videos but the one that really caught my attention every day was that same one and just something about it just made you stand out so I think what I'm hearing you say as well is it's it's about breaking those patterns and standing out from those 77 emails you're getting in a day right awesome awesome um, Jimmy how, how about yourself how do you best capture uh, attention of prospects throughout the funnel yeah, I think the I think the other um, uh, two as well. They they're both you know fantastic points, right? And everything uh, they say makes it makes a ton of sense. Um, I'll I'll break it into to two two pieces. One is you know strategic, and then a little bit more tactical. Um, so more literally, how do we literally stand out? Um, you know, within that inbox, there's a couple of key tactics you can use, which is using something like an animated uh, GIF. Um, so that it actually shows movement within and draws their eyes towards something like that. Um, and I think Andrea brought it up as well. Is there's there's different styles of video or different types of videos you can use, right? Um, all of which are are good for all different aspects of a sales cycle. Um, depending on what the conversation has been to date, are you building a relationship? Is this your first reach out? Are you responding to a question or an inquiry? Um, and from a tactical standpoint, there's lots of different ways you can do it, which leads into more of what I would call the strategic, you know, high level is, you know, throughout a sales cycle, it's, it's so important to continuously educate and continuously be providing value through education. And most people, I think it's 67% of people are visual learners, which provides them, you know, an outlet or, or, or medium that's going to help cater to that 67% of people and help understand certain concepts with, I know, you know, for myself, uh, selling is SaaS products. Uh, I think things are simple and I, I completely understand them, but I shouldn't, you know, think that everyone that I'm trying to sell to or have conversations with understand exactly how we tie into a different piece of software. Um, so, you know, visually being able to walk them through that and see exactly what I'm talking about or what we would be talking about, I think is, is critical to helping educate throughout a sales cycle, uh, whether it's entry level or we're, you know, doing a, a contract walkthrough or a proposal walkthrough or, you know, answering, you know, different terms, uh, you know, from a legal perspective uh, helps build efficiency into that way as well. Uh, that's, that's a great point, Jimmy. And I think it kind of speaks to the, the old phrase of like, it's, it's uh, selling, not telling, right? Like you're, you're communicating, you're educating throughout the buying process. So your, your job as a seller is not necessarily just to you know, get them to sign on the dotted line, but it's also to educate them on why they're signing with you and why they're dealing with you as a person, let alone the company that you're representing. So I, I like that. And, and if I take all of all three of you together, um, all your answers, it's really about creating that human connection and, and peaking curiosity, tapping into emotion, humanizing the whole sales process. And I like what you said there, Jimmy, it's, it's not just at the top of the funnel either, it's kind of throughout the process. So a proposal follow-up, even explaining the contract that you're sending. There's so many different areas that you can use video um, that make perfect sense. And, and so really appreciate that, thanks. And I'd, I'd actually like to invite the audience if you wanna send in a chat, outside of prospecting and outside of that original outreach, where else can you use video? to do this, to, to create that emotional attachment, to connect with your buyer better. So if uh, we're not, micro demos, interesting.
Yeah, I see that a lot for, for really successful sellers, that meeting summary and next steps is just say, hey, Dale, it was great meeting you. Like, love talking with you. We discuss this as next steps, and here's some information that I'm sharing with you. Very simple 30 second, 60 second video to just kind of give a quick recap, and again, keep that human touch going. Um, as, as somebody who buys a lot for people I work with, I, I do a lot of RevOps stuff, um, you definitely deal with a lot of different types of follow ups, and I can count on my hand how many times I've got a video follow up. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Uh, moving the discussion forward, um, I'd like to kind of switch gears a little bit, but how does video allow you to spend more time selling? So we've talked a little bit about how, how video works, but how does it actually save you time? Um, so I'll start, with, uh, I'll start with Dale this time. Yeah, I think from the perspective of even like the conversation that's happening in the chat, the video can be incorporated throughout your entire process. And it should be incorporated throughout your entire process. That people hear you differently than they read you. Right. And what I mean by that is like if I send an email and it says blah, 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 that's what people read. <laughs> but if I send a video with tonality and expression and flexion, then people people hear that too. So I think it saves a lot of time because there's no miscommunication on certain things. There's like a lot of clarity inside of what it is that you're creating and there's intentionality there as well. So I think really honestly, like it's it is crazy that people don't use video more often. Uh, I would even, you know, at the end of a conversation before we had tools like Vidyard, uh, just text a video over that somebody could download, whether it was MP3 or it was hosted on an FTP or you know, YouTube or something along those lines directly to their cell phone, like when they were driving back to their office from a demo that they had on site. Because the more you can be present with people, the less you have to be selling in the first place because you're just building on the relationship and, and sharing nuancing an experience for somebody so that they come back to you and just say, yo, what's up, Jeff? I just, I'm ready to buy. Can we just like get down to it? I'm just ready to do this. I'm super stoked on this experience so far and I trust you. That's what we're working toward in the first place, right? So like, you know, sending out a thousand, some people talk about like, well, let me just automate my email, right? I'm gonna send a thousand emails this week. I'm just gonna automate that. That saves me time, right? But like, who are you selling to? Right. Blank, you know, like empty emails, like spam folders. I mean, if you sent 80 personalized videos a week instead of a thousand just boring, lame, untargeted emails, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll be doing more selling in that process and you'll be saving yourself a lot of headache and heartache in the process as well too so i think there's different ways to kind of measure that i know this right i kind of jumped to two different versions like one being like quality of time and then one being just like general time right that we can you know create more like urgency inside of our process and really get people connected but i think both of those are super important so you're saying batch and blast doesn't work dale <laughs> um no <laughs> what come on you guys are all the same right like i'm just gonna message to all of you the same um one of the things i hear from my students a lot is that uh they um they say it takes time to to make those personalized touches and all that stuff so what do you say to them so it takes extra time to find that personalization stuff and it takes time to record a video but what can you say to that deal so uh my guy tim clark is my favorite i've been doing this my whole life right or like Literally, I don't know, like personalize it fast. Because my dad always taught me that a servant leader is somebody that, that looks at a situation and says, how do I accommodate and bless somebody else in this moment? And I think that that's the problem with the world today, right? But Tim Clark, I mentioned him because he's an awesome human being and an amazing person out on LinkedIn. If you're not following his content, check him out. He runs a company called Uncrushed. And I saw that he worked at Google and at Salesforce, um, rather and and so i think a lot of people would see that they'd be like oh i'm gonna like hit this guy up and talk about salesforce and i just like i click like three different links i spent i don't know 45 total seconds and i knew like a ton about this guy recovering al alcoholic uh, um, that he had found i guess unfresh for sales that he was real big in the mental health game right in 45 seconds guys and girls it's really like, honestly, like when people say that to me, Jeff, I, all I hear is, it's not scalable. And I just want to slap it, right? It's those words right out of the air, just slap it as hard as I can because everybody that says things like robots are going to replace salespeople, like that's why, yeah. because y'all are feeding the beast every day. But meanwhile, there's a bunch of us out here, and I know there's other people even in the chat today. And there's people, the reason people are here today is to learn how to create 
something much more sustainable in this process. And so people look at it as unsustainable, that's garbage. Because if you were to get five people to say this month that they're interested in buying from you, I guarantee you that's better than most of the numbers that you could possibly get. And it's just through a few minutes of your time. There's an art form to it, right? I'm not going to say there's not. Like, I've watched people try to do it, Jeff, and it's, like, really funny. So, <laughs> it's like, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Don't, don't click their Facebook and look at pictures of their kids and bring that up in the conversation. That's, it's not going to fly. But, but it is, again, it's, it's simplistic, right? And for everybody other that's selling to segments that, like, you can't find stuff on the internet from them, just literally call the front desk or walk in their office. Like, anybody that's in blue-collar work or, like, you can walk into like a manufacturing firm, for example, and you can see every accolade on the wall, see the names of the people that you're trying to get in touch with, see that they sponsor the T-ball team that's local. You can see all the initiatives that they that you do might, or might have in common with them, I should say. It's not that difficult. Everything is an excuse outside of just saying, yes, I'm in. Uh, love it. So, and, and I'm just going to summarize the too long don't read is it doesn't actually take that much time. And the return is significantly higher than not doing it. Um, everybody, it looks like everybody agrees here. Does anybody on the chat disagree with that? Because uh, we got some words. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to say thank you, Dale, for your uh, for your response there. Um, as far as uh, the, remember the time, how does video save you time in selling? I'd love to go to Jimmy now to to see what what your thoughts are on the subject. Yeah, I'll, I'll take two two routes again. The, the first one is, you know, all of these tools, whether it's, you know, Vidyard or a comparable tool to Vidyard or sales acceleration products, it's all it's all based on building efficiency into your process, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with that, I think someone in the chat had mentioned and, and brought up micro demos. So I'll kind of go down that route. You know, micro demos are key concepts, right? The more, again, that you can educate on the front end, right? If, if I don't need to engage in SC, uh, into a call because they've asked some questions around an integration that we do uh, or you know that our company would do and I can showcase how that integration works and then limit having to have an additional call um, right where the SC has to come in and do some technical validation uh, that's saving some time within the sales process right you've probably now cut cut your sales cycle down by at least a week or two weeks just by proactively giving them that content that they can now ship around and have the appropriate people watch and give the thumbs up to. Um, so, so building uh, pieces like that into it. Uh, the second piece, which is, isn't necessarily the video specifically, uh, but with most tools, you're going to get analytics in behind it, right? And what that's going to help you do, you know, top of funnel is be able to segment where the interest lies, where the engagement lies and be able to, for, for you to, uh, you know, now hone in on the individual's, that are showing you know, the highest buying signals based on who's actually engaging with, with the content, right? Um, you know, further down the funnel as we look, and I'm sure there's, there's gonna be some, some folks on the call that, are, that may disagree, I call it old school thinking, right? When we talk about pricing, right? Think of how many calls that you, you go in, you've got to prep for, and this is the first time you're delivering <coughs> pricing to, to a customer. It's not right for every, for every uh, industry, right? But now if I can prep, the customer beforehand by walking through what's included within the proposal, why I'm you know pitching it, you know a couple of days before we're actually getting on that pricing call, the quality of conversation that we're going to have is going to be far different than me giving you a surprise, letting you then digest that. Then we're probably going to have to have another call to potentially negotiate around it, right? What this does is allows you now to save them time. They can digest it and you can have a much uh, better quality dialogue with them. Uh, and again, that goes around the efficiency piece and that goes around, you know, shortening your sales cycle uh, as a whole. So there's a couple of, you know, I would say strategic plays that are within there, but it's really getting tools like video or sales acceleration tools to be working for you uh, and working with you to, to build that efficiency. Absolutely. That's awesome, Jimmy. Yeah, because uh, just even when you said the SC, like having a, a you know sales engineer on on the call or anything like that, it's like just trying to get that one high value resource in your company to be able to explain something. And when you're competing with you know 15 other AEs for the same person, uh, I, it, we can all agree that can be really challenging. So just being able to have that uh, that sales engineer actually just record a short video to answer the same question you're hearing from every customer every time in the sales process. Man, that doesn't just save your time, but it saves the whole team time, right? And an yeah. unbottled next resources. So I could to I could see how that 
uh, that is just one of the many examples of where that could work. So um, cool. thanks for that, Jimmy. Um, how about you, Andrea? Yeah, so man, I'm taking everything in and just trying to figure out what hasn't been said yet. Um, but I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit because I, as an account executive, I have been using video um, and voice narration for a few uh, past companies that I've been with throughout my sales process. And there is a little bit of a lift when it comes to being on camera for the first time. But like Dale was saying, go out and practice, get out of the shoebox, get comfortable. Once you are comfortable with being on camera, I mean, I sent a, a guy no showed me the other day and I sent him a, a, a video straight to his cell phone. It was like, Hey, I'm in the zoom room. Uh, where are you at? And so just by having that confidence and being comfortable, that's when you are, it will end up saving you time in the long run. So going back to what Dale was saying, whereas, uh, towards the end of the funnel, you are going to be selling more because you're not wasting your time with the thousand unpersonalized emails to begin with. That's not selling. That's prospecting, right? You are not selling at that stage. When you are deeper in the funnel, that's where you are going to be saving the time by having that preparation ready for your sales cycle and deeper in the funnel. And um, specifically in my case with AirDeck, we do save ourselves some time by if you do have to explain um, like complex concepts or send a case study, just like Jimmy was saying, that you're, you're kind of surprising them with this giant piece that they're going to have to read. You can then voice narrate over it or send a video with it and just narrate and give that brief example of what you sent over. But it then adds your personal touch, your warm message, and um, it, it's not just a boring case study that they have to read. So a um, little bit of both sides. Once you put in the work, it definitely pays off. Awesome. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, so, so many time savers. It's kind of ridiculous, but it's just a matter of, it sounds like all three of you, it's really about being thoughtful of your sales process and understanding those plays that you're running and then being able to know what is kind of something that can be a time saver and what can't. So mm -hmm. it's really important that you know that. Um, and the best way to do that is actually just to collect customer questions and put votes beside them. You know, <laughs> if you keep getting... Uh, more ticks on the box besides one question, make a video. Uh, that That's an easy way to make a decision if you're looking. Um, so awesome. Uh, I'm going to take a stop here to answer a couple audience questions. I know they've been burning a hole in our screen. Um, there's so, some really good ones too. There's yeah. some good ones. <laughs> so I'm going to start with Tim. Uh, so Tim asks, what platform is the best to post quick 30-second videos? Oh, Dale wants to answer that one. Can I answer this? Yes, yes, please do. Vidyard. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god. No, but for real, like, I think we've all kind of, like, those of us who have been selling, like Andrea and me, like, I just started my business, and I've been selling in my business, and Jimmy, that's no, like, knock at you, I'm sure you've been selling too, right, bro, but, <laughs> but what I mean by that is, like, we've used, like, Jimmy is with Vidyard, right, but, like, we've used all of them. Like, I can't really speak for Andrea, but, like, she said she was at a couple other locations. Like, everybody has stuff that's good. But I'm going to just tell you right now that Vidyard has got some gnarly little hacks that it does, that it has, especially, like, you can get a free version or a paid version, but the paid version, y'all, I mean, it's it's bonkers, right? It gives you it gives you analytics. Look at me. I'm like a commercial for freaking Vidyard right now. But seriously, <laughs> it's, like, extraordinarily important to understand that when you're leaning into something specific like a video platform, to really understand like what you need out of it. Because maybe Vidyard's not the right fit for everybody, but it, it is absolutely one of the most brilliant platforms that's out there and you can try it for free. So why the heck wouldn't you? Yeah, and I have to say, Dale, uh, I'm also a Vidyard fan. Use it every single day throughout the whole funnel uh, and even to train my staff. So I, there's a lot of different things that we can use. Um, and yeah, all, all tools are great. Just happen to like Vidyard a lot. <laughs> I'll, 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 I, I won't say Vidyard, but what I will say is video specifically, you know, there's Vidyard, we've got a number of different competitors. If you're trying to get started on video, it doesn't really matter what platform you're getting started out on, right? If, you know, what we see with most of our, our customers as we're, we're starting to get our foot in the door, you know, one of the biggest risks is, is adoption. I don't know if our reps are really going to be able to use this tool. Download any of the, the free ones, get them to start using that within their process, start to see some of the wins that come out of it. 
then it's time to start evaluating what product is, is the best fit. But the first part is, and you know, we've talked about from a selling perspective, right? Video is, is wonderful because it's a communication tool, right? But even on the internal comms perspective, we talked a little bit about the SC piece. If I can also prep an SC about a call that we're going to have to eliminate a 30 minute meeting, internal meeting that we have to have and just highlight some of those, again, that's a time saver. So there's a number of different, you know, key aspects to video that's not just seller exclusive, uh, but I would recommend to anyone on the call who, uh, who has said, no, I haven't or not yet, try any of the free tools and start to get used to it because your customers over time are going to expect this as a communication uh, medium. So it's, you know, if you, you haven't got started, get started now, get used to it and start enjoying it because it's, uh, it's what's going to be happening in the future. You know, Andrea, you, you mentioned, uh, no, thank, thanks for that, Jimmy, sorry. Um, Andrea mentioned uh, call like creating a video for somebody while you were waiting on the Zoom call. Yeah. So you must have done that really fast. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I mean, what, what's the proper time? Like five minutes late, you know, you, you, just in case there's traffic or whatever. But I sent it right to his cell phone and um, it's it, it, it not only says a lot about, you know, how you can use video, but it also, you stand out a little bit more. And if you do sell to sales teams, they appreciate that as a salesperson. So they're, then they, they're like, oh, okay, like, yeah, let's have a conversation. Sorry, I ghosted you. Let's reschedule or I'm 10 minutes late. Sorry, whatever they say. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so we'll go to the next question. We have we have a few, so we're going to try to get these answered as fast as we can. Um, what's the best way to use video in LinkedIn with connections? Uh, <laughs> I see Dale wants to answer this. <laughs> the native format is cool, but uh, <laughs> you guessed it, Vidyard has a plugin on LinkedIn that is super dope. Once again, uh, it makes it super easy for you to be able to do screen share videos, and there's just a lot to that particular plugin that's awesome that y'all should check out if you're especially if you're going to lean into linkedin i think what they have is extraordinarily comprehensive to the platform and very helpful for sellers uh, but the uh, the other side of though is that i would just tell people like yo seriously just use the native format as well too like just shoot a video and send it and you can do that through your cell phone very easily um the the desktop app is kind of finicky for some people like whether they've got all the updates or they're paying for in mails or but if you're connected with somebody and you're using your cell phone, it's really easy to like just quickly send a voice note or quickly send a video. And a video is just as simple as sending a voice note. So like if you get a hat on, you don't have to worry about your hair. That's my trick. Then you're always looking fresh and you can just shoot that video real quick and be like, what's up? Right. <laughs> but native format, if you're if you're debating, check out the Vidyard LinkedIn extension. It's dope. Cool. And and actually speaking of that, um, to your point, Dale, about just you know, getting it done, getting the video done. I heard a really cool phrase from the Vidyard team uh, when we were prepping for this this event. And Jimmy, what what is uh what is the standard at Vidyard? What how many takes do you have to take? Well, I think like you you just do one. You get to the point where you you know you have to relieve yourself of thinking that this has to be perfect because people buy from people, and we know that. If you try and script something, uh, you're going to come across as it's a script, uh, which kind of takes all of the personalization elements out of it because I'm not delivering something that's truly from me. I'm delivering a script, right? Yeah, and, and I heard from your team member it was um, one take, so one and done, or three and send, right? Yeah. So, like, if you're going to do edits and you're going to do takes, then you have to send it on the third. Is that is that right? Well, you, it, for anyone who's first first starting out, you'll notice that it's like, oh, I, I can't remember if I said that, or right? maybe I, I could have articulated this a little bit better. Um, when in all reality, if you keep doing it, you're just going to end up taking 15 takes uh, or more because it's it's going to be difficult to deliver something as perfect as you you have it in your mind. So yeah. you know, get the key points across and set kind of sit, put that line in the sand and say, if I, if I don't get it by take three, it's going to be good enough to, to be able to send through. And the, think, key, the key pieces are going to be there. So, right. I think from my personal experience, I, I, my best advice is 
don't even watch it back. If you hit the bullet points that you wanted to hit, don't replay it because you will find something that you don't like about it. And then you're going to have to redo it. And then you, you get into a habit of rewatching it and rewatching it. It is best to just, if you nail the bullet points that you wanted to convey or the message you want to convey, send it and forget it because you will sit there forever. Unless you have something going on in the background that just is not worth sending, then send it. You're good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, and we're going to do one last question before we move on to the discussion because we still have a bunch. Um, so how do you ensure your video gets watched and the prospect's email security doesn't flag the video as spam? Mm -hmm. I can, I can probably start with that one because I probably have more, more experience on the back end piece. Um, so there's, there's, there's two pieces to it. One is it also depends on what you've sent previously because that will get captured in spam before you even send a video. So you've got to limit um, and be very catered to who you're, which companies you're sending to, who you're sending to, how many people within the company you're sending to, and what's going to be involved in that before you even send anything that's going to be video related. Um, not saying that that's a must, uh, but like most companies, you've probably had BDRs, SDRs going after these companies already who may have already flagged your company within their spam filters. The second part to that is that's, I would, I would air quote, because I have one hand in my pocket, so half an air quote, um, you know, that, that, that's a bit of a myth, right? Because the way that most of these video platforms work uh, is the video, it's not a video file, right? That's within the email. It's actually an image that's hyperlinked out to a landing page. So if that was going to be the case, you'll be able to notice if, if you have gotten a response, if any of the, the logos, the, the corporate logos are, uh, the, it shows like a, uh, the image broken within there that they have some pretty tight uh, spam filters. For the most part, most companies don't um, because it's essentially like sending a regular email that has an image in it, which is your company logo. Um, so very rarely will will the actual video file get stuck in spam. It's probably happened before you've even started that. Um, and the other pieces there should be, and depending on what product you're going with, obviously Vidyard does this, there's a fallback link. So if the image, you know, they, they do uh, scrape the images off, there's going to be a fallback link. So as part of your strategy, you also should be referencing the fact that there's a, uh, an image and a link below that, that you want them to click. So that they know that that's... Um, what was sent um, purposefully. Awesome. Yeah, so it, it sounds to me like there's um, some technical things here, but there's also some process things here to keep it from from being uh, sent to spam. So it's uh, make sure that the email is, I guess, warm uh, so that you're not sending like a cold, cold email with a bunch of stuff, but then also um, you, you don't want to send it with an attachment or anything like that. You want to send it with a platform that's kind of linking the video file as opposed to just sending the actual file yeah for, mo for most of them yeah exactly so the, the way that most of them uh, are set up is it is like a, a hyperlinked image um, so it gives you the perception especially with you know an animated gif that the video is playing within their inbox when really it's it's taking you out into uh, more of a landing page experience um yeah but i think for for the most part um we i mean i'll speak from vidyard personally we don't see a ton of that happening and oftentimes, when things do get caught up in spam filters, it really doesn't have to, anything to do with the video provider. It has to do with, I would say, the velocity of activity that's probably happened at that account already. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Makes, makes perfect sense. I hope that I, was uh, helpful. I got, I got one. Nope. Uh, yeah, just like... This is like... There's no way to know that this actually works. Jimmy could like give us a head nod, maybe? But... Uh, one of the most successful ways that I've gotten it like past all the filters and everything that was just discussed is like, I'll send an initial email that'll just say, Hey, I'm sending you a video. And then I'll reply to that email and there'll be a video. The second email with the link. And I found great success in doing that over time. You get like two quick opens if you're tracking <laughs> your emails and, and it's almost like telling the story, right? Cause again, like you want to think about the experience you're giving people in the process as well too. So don't we doing things that are gimmicky, like, play with the curiosity of people. And that's, you know, one of the most important pieces of the puzzle, like I talked about earlier, at least for Rebels. So use little tricks like that, even though I'm not a big fan of it, the trick thing. But I feel like that's one that's 
experiential in the process as well too and it's not double tapping and making someone think that you're you have an emergency pick up the phone yeah I, I agree. I wanted to add to that too, is I've seen most success of sending when it comes to like cold outreach, just sending a regular cold email first. And then almost like what Dale was saying, where he would say, Hey, I'm going to send you a video. This is still my initial like cold email. And then if I don't get a response, I've seen a lot of success with like just hitting reply all and then putting that video because then it puts a person behind the email. It, there's an actual human behind that original email. I'm not a robot. I'm not a, a paid robot who sent you know, these mass emails. Like I actually really do want to have a conversation with you. And by just sending a video with um, what I had sent in the first email has had a lot of um, opens and, re and even replies. And, and Andrea, uh, that's a great suggestion. And do you send that right away or do you send that in the next day or a couple of days later? I usually wait uh, till the next day. It depends. I mean, at least over 24 hours, you don't want to send it, you know, right away. It's like, why haven't you emailed me back? So. <laughs> the stalker. <laughs> yeah. I'm on your Facebook now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to take a pause from the audience questions for a second and ask a, a question of the panel, um, starting with Jimmy. What are the benefits of uh, video analytics? So, like, how do video analytics make you a better seller? I guess is a better question. Yeah, the, all, there's there's a few a few different avenues we can take with that. Uh, I think like most, you know, efficiency tool, efficiency building solutions or, or tools, uh, analytics are going to help in in two separate categories. One is you've got individual style analytics, so you know, understanding who's interacted with something, when they've interacted, how often they've interacted with it, um, because as we know. Being within sales, uh, timing's everything. And if I can engage with someone who's very recently been engaged with something that I've sent them, I've got a much higher quality chance of booking a meeting or, you know, getting that follow-up conversation going, etc. Uh, the second piece is on aggregate, and that can go uh, as far as you know for all of the managers on on the the call, understanding the performance across the team. That can be. Uh, understanding the performance across your potential customer base, so understanding, you know, uh, what what are what are our open rates, what are our engagement rates, on average, which one of my my sellers gets the highest engagement rates, and why is that? So there's lots of coaching that can happen uh, towards towards that as well. When we look at bigger picture for a company, right? Um, you know, sales sometimes we feel like we're on an island because everyone's always asking us to do things, right? But if we can provide an additional layer of data on top of everything that we're already capturing, right? What can the marketing team do with that? How can they they also use an additional layer of data to filter for highly engaged leads? Um, because if we look at it from a historical standpoint, there's lots of folks who have engaged within your emails, lots of folks who have engaged within videos, right? Who didn't necessarily buy or didn't move through that stage or move through your funnel at that point in time. But how can we go back and capture their attention uh, how can I be alerted if, you know, I've sent Dale uh, a video walkthrough of a proposal. He's gone dark for 30 days. Now all of a sudden I see that Dale's watching my video proposal, right? How can I now strike and, and, and what can I do as a seller to make, again, those analytics work for me and build that into my process? Uh, so then there's, I covered a lot of different areas there and a little bit blanketed, but from my perspective, those are, some key areas where analytics are, are going to pay dividends for, for anyone using um, a video solution that, that tracks analytics. Thank you. Um, Andrew, do you have any insight on how you use uh, analytics? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I definitely agree with everything Jimmy said. To add on to, um, I also have two pieces. Um, the team collaboration part of it, right? So if you have your, you know, a team of AEs and one AE is having a lot of success and replies to the videos that they're doing, what are they doing that's different? And you can collaborate with your team and help and, and, and really just like share the success, um, and, and share what's working or what really, what, what's not working. Right. And so, um, the team collaboration, being able to see the analytics, but, um, for that piece, but the second piece is also what Jimmy was saying of like, what's resonating, um, specifically with air deck. And I know with Vidyard, you're able to actually see down to the last second um of the the slide so speaking air deck now like specifically of like where 
they watched. So what's resonating and having that same analytic tracking with Vidyard, it's super important to be able to generate those conversations or even, um, Hey, you know, I, I saw you were lost on this or they, they forwarded it off. And just that little bit of tracking will really help push. It, it brings up more of the conversation or gives you talking points of the conversation to be able to figure out where we are now in the sales process. Thank you, Andrea. And it just so everybody knows, I might be, it seems like my internet connection is unstable. So if I go blank, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, awesome. Uh, how about you, Dale? Do you have any uh, suggestions on the topic as well? I mean, I honestly, like, those are two of the best answers in the world. So y'all better have been listening and taking notes. I think adding would just be redundant. And I think it's more important for me to say that I see you, I hear you, and I think those are both absolutely excellent and solid examples of how to conquer that as an issue or that as a topic. Awesome. Thanks, Dale. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's very clear there's a lot of different ways that analytics can help you as a seller. And I love that both of, like, both of you were really clear on there's kind of individual and then there's team. Um, and, and really taking those analytics and, and helping out your neighbor, helping out your colleague and helping out the team and marketing and product and whoever else and just being able to know who, who is engaged across the whole funnel. Um, and it just makes everybody better sellers. So I love that you folks both incorporated that or all three of you. Um, so, uh, it looks like we have a whole bunch of more questions from the audience. So I'm happy to open it up now. Um, and I welcome everybody, uh, watching at home to ask your questions now because we're going to spend the next 10 minutes answering all of your questions. <laughs> so um, Kartik asks, uh, what are your views on templatizing a prospecting video? Does it always have to be very personal? Let me, can I have this one? Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, all right, so, so a couple of thoughts here. One would be earlier in the conversation we, we talked about like experiences through your video content. Um, there's a, a young lady at uh, Docebo that actually put in uh, for the Vidyard Video Awards that just happened recently. And she did this awesome, very templated, you would call it, video that she created that works for anybody that's having issues with the things that she's talking about. And, and that's that familiar moment that you're trying to create for people. like personalization creates a familiar moment for somebody. It's not just like, Ooh, this person hears me. It's about like them, like connecting emotionally with like the thing that you're talking about. So my father passed away in 2016 and he's like the reason that I continue to live the life that I live that, that you see before you today, all the, the decisions I make, they're based on a legacy that he left for me that I'm wandering and following. And when people bring my father up into a conversation, you have to do it respectfully but when they do i feel connection in that moment especially when they talk about their upbringing or something again that's familiar where i can connect to that so it's it goes beyond like you knowing stuff about me it's about again this emotion of familiarity more than anything else that creates nostalgia a sense of wonder and it, it connects us to the moment so i think honestly i think that that this is a great question i've been waiting for this one i i've been listening to everything i've been waiting for this question because i i really want to like just kind of squash the identity of that every single video that you send has to be directly to somebody this very hyper personalized video i know i even mentioned earlier you could send 80 of those as opposed to your thousand emails and get a better result but the other side of that is how do you create something that is consistent for you and that helps with time management and it keeps you productive as well at the same time so again if if you were to create even an explainer video, like, hey, you know, what do we write in our emails that people resonate with the most? The problems that they're having. That's what sales is. Like, how, how, do, we, how do we create ideas and solutions and how do we build something, you know, beyond just this idea of, like, I'm with a company and I sell a product, right? And so creating something around that notion makes it less templated even, right? Because it's, it is 
strictly what you're talking about right here is something that either resonates with the person that you're talking to. And listen, we all in all of our industries, there are very generalized things that people suffer from. Let's take, take copiers, for example. Everyone freaking hates their copy machine. Like, to tell one person to step up in here and be like, no, oh, Dale, I love my copy machine. Like, I dare you. I'll fight you. Because yeah, the, the thing is, is that they do these very consistent things like paper jams or that toner's out and it takes five days to get there. And so if I can create those scenarios and tell people, like, I know what it's like to be in these situations and I have ideas and solutions that can help fix these problems. Should, would it be crazy to talk about this? You know, that that's the concept. Like I can template that and send that, you know, to a substantial amount of people and create conversations from that. But what I would like caution against is like sending a thousand of those emails, right? That's the thought process. There's a middle ground for all of this guys. So you don't have to think that the only way to send videos to be very hyper personalized. And that's just my two cents. Perfect. Thank you. And um, Andrew, Jimmy, do you have anything to add? I was just going to add that I think sending a video in general is a way of personalizing without being super hyper personalized because you know you 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 still have like you went out of your way to create that little bit of a video right and so you're also delivering again I'm going to say it your warm message your personality so I could send Dale like an evergreen video which has no personal personalization but I'd be like hey how's it going Andrea here and it's still a warm message and you still went out of your way to make that video instead of a static email so it is a, a, a slight way of personalizing without actually hyper-personalizing. So personal, not personalized. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you, Andrea. Um, how about you, Jimmy? Anything to add? Oh, I think those are, are fantastic answers. I think you know, the only uh, piece to that, again, I, f I feel like a bit of a broken record, but getting things to, to work with your process, right? So you've probably got some kind of cadencing tool. Um, you know, if, if you're looking at video as kind of your silver bullet, which I would say don't look at it as your silver bullet. This is another, you know, uh, arrow that you can you can put um, in. But um, where where do you typically get your highest responses, right? Is it at after like the sixth step, right? If, if you know that you're, you're historically going to get your best results at the sixth step, how do I juice up the sixth step and make sure that I convert even more at that point, right? Do I need to send a personalized video to all, 100 people I'm prospecting, probably not, um, right? But how, how can I strategically put it where I know I'm going to get the best results and that I've proven to get the best results? Uh, and then the second part to that is, is like uh, they both said, you've got a, a huge opportunity to um, be able to leverage existing content, whether that's customer case studies, whether that's a product overview, again, back to helping educate. And that could be the first piece of, of a different cadence that you're running to see who's going to be engaged and is my messaging resonating? And if it is resonating, how do I then, you know, again, send something very personalized to try and capture that meeting or, or whatever it's going to be within that sales cycle. So I fully agree with, with uh, both of them. And fun fact, uh, I was also in the copier world for about eight years. So we've got that in common. I knew we hit it off right away. So Copy vets over here. <laughs> Amazing. Um, no, thanks, Jimmy, and, and, and thanks to all of you for your amazing answers. Um, we are just about at time, so I just wanted to wrap it up by asking one final question for each of you, um, and start with Jimmy. What is your number one super actionable tip that everybody needs to know about using video for sales? Uh, I think for, for those who haven't tried it, just, just try it and, um, and get used to, to doing it and enjoy doing it. Um, I think the other, other piece, um, you know, would be think think through, um, depending on wherever you're at within a sales cycle, if you're responding to something, uh, your first thought should be, does this make sense to be a video? If the answer is yes, make a video for it, right? If the answer is no, because there's going to be some times where it, it's, it's not going to make any sort of difference if you make a video or not. It could be a very short response. I don't really need to. Um, so, you know, think through, is this a good time for a video? If it is, deliver a video. Um, that would be my biggest tip. Awesome. I love the uh, just do it approach of just, uh, just get to it, make it happen, and, uh, and, and just do it. I love it. Um, so uh, how about you, Andrea? What's your super actionable tip for getting started with video? 
Yeah. So, um, Jimmy kind of stole part of mine. So, uh, <laughs> but, um, really just being consistent and you have the opportunity to convey your message and add your personality and your warm message to every step of the sales cycle, whether it be video or voice narration, utilize the tools that you have to convey that you are a real person, convey that you are, you have personality, you're not a robot. And every, every step of the way that you have the opportunity to do so, do it. And once you get used to it, it's going to be so easy to do. And it's going to be almost first nature. And you're, you're going to see the outcomes later down the funnel. So consistency is really a big key. Consistency, mm -hmm. you keep doing it and eventually you're going to get amazing at it. And people are going to want the, want to open those videos, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, how about you, Dale? What's your uh, super actionable tip? I sit up a little bit. I, I think that the actionable tip that you can take from me is to lean into your authenticity. And, and that's not like some kind of playbook. That's just like you being you, right? That keeping it real at all points in time and communication and video is the best way to be able to convey who you are and not to worry about what you look like, not to worry about how you sound, not to worry about it. Did you say this thing correctly? I mean, I've sent videos where I've messed the company name up and stopped myself and got, oops, that was wrong. This is your actual name. Sorry about that. And then kept going, like be your authentic self and the way that you're portraying yourself on a daily basis, right? Do not put a mask on and jump on your video. Do not tap into this weird, you know, business mindset that we've been shackled to for many years now. Remember that people buy from people and that they will absolutely buy from somebody that they are building credibility with through the process of you being authentic with them and helping them to see that they can trust you. Awesome. So authenticity is really be your true self and don't put the mask on. Take the mask off and just do it. Um, I wanted to add to to that because uh, Dale said pu he puts his hat on. If if you are a makeup wearer, don't worry about doing your makeup to send videos out. You don't have to have makeup on. I put makeup on for this today, but I'm going to be honest. I, half of my videos do not have makeup on. Just be true to yourself. <laughs> and and uh, just for clarity, your true, uh, at least pro somewhat professional self. <laughs> so yeah. Not, not, your, <laughs> yes. not your true, yes. true self. Not after eight beers or whatever. <laughs> like your true, yeah, true let's self. Keep it professional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you very much to our panelists. Thank for every everybody for showing up and asking fantastic questions. Um, we look forward to seeing all of your videos uh, out there. And uh, just, yeah, enjoy. And uh, have a great day, everybody.